Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the fourth of the seventh month on our Creator's calendar as we reckon it, which happens to coincide with September 14th on 2024 on the Gregorian calendar. And today, I wanted to take a look at something that came across my attention not too long ago. <clears throat> if you all remember... We recently mentioned a video that I'd seen called the Maseratic PSYOP, and it went over the Brenton Septuagint and some of the differences that you can find that, that kind of encouraged me to go back to the Septuagint again with our reading of the Proverbs for our morning wisdom literature for my children, which we usually will will rotate out between reading the Proverbs, Sirach, Yob, uh, the shepherd of Hermas, and uh, we also go, sometimes we'll read different things, but mostly we'll stick with Proverbs, Sirach, and Ecclesiastes, the, what they call the wisdom literature, if you will. And we'll also go from the regular versions or the Masoretic to the Septuagint. And Either way, it encouraged me to go back to the Septuagint, and while we're reading through the Proverbs now, I've been seeing things that I didn't notice before, and I thought it was really amazing. I don't know if this is going to share exactly the same thing, but I did want to share with you all something that I had noticed that you guys can look into as well. I've never used this particular script or website before, but it is rather interesting because it gives you the Septuagint on the left-hand side and then the KJV which seems to be with the restored names of some version on the right. So it will really help you to be able to see the differences in the translations between the two. If you go through the Maserotic PSYOP, which I highly encourage everyone to look at, it it is a direct evidence of the tampering with the word that had happened before it was handed over to Rome and what came down in what we call the Masoretic text, but <clears throat> as well as different versions of the Greek. You, you have to watch the video. It's very well put together. But long story short, I wanted to read through this. This is an amazing example of our Mashiach that we don't get to see all the time. You, If you read it in the Proverbs in the Masoretic text, you can see that it's alluding to him. But the things that were removed from versions is very telling that the, the, this is the king or the ruler over kings, which he's the king of kings, for one. But just for perfect clarity for anyone that might want to dig into this, our Mashiach said that the Ruach speaks to men his words, right? So we don't have to go beyond the Bible for that one. And then you have, he's the one that was begotten by the Father through whom all things were made. You have all these illusions and direct references that he spoke himself, that the emissaries and others taught, that is right here in Proverb 8, even in the Masoretic text. When you look at it in the uh, Septuagint here, you, you see a little bit more, which is what I wanted to share. So it says, you shall proclaim chokmah or wisdom, which the word chokma, if you remember, a hok is the palate, the, t the roof of your mouth. It's also to wean a child, which was originally by chewing up dates into a paste and sticking it to the roof of the child's mouth so that they can taste it and help to get them weaned off of milk onto solid food. But it says you shall, and that's what hokma, it's to taste, hok, what, ma, is good for you right? But you shall proclaim hokma that comprehension may be obedient to you. Understanding is another word that's interesting. It's almost related to bone, buna, the, the structure of a building to con construct something, and also ben, a son. Bina, or bean, is to be between, when it was between the darkness and between the light, that Yahuwah was separated, it was with comprehension or with doing these things. So these are all related words. 
But it says, You shall proclaim Hokmah that comprehension may be obedient to you, for she is on lofty eminences or heights and stands in the midst of her, the ways. For she sits by the gates of princes and sings in the entrances. You, O men, I exhort, and utter my voice to the sons of men. You simple, another version says, you foolish, right? But you simple comprehend subtlety, and you that are untaught in bib knowledge. Drink knowledge. Hearken to me, for I will speak solemn, and I will produce right from my lips. For my throat shall meditate truth, and false lips are an abomination before me. It says no idle word will be spoken in his presence in the book of Hanok. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing in them wrong or perverse. They are all evident to those that comprehend and right to those that find knowledge. Receive instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than tried gold. For hokma is better than precious stones, and no valuable substance is of equal worth with it. I, hokma have dwelt with counsel and knowledge. Now that's added, so it says, I, wisdom, have dwelt. Counsel and knowledge. These are all things that he literally is. right? And I have called upon comprehension. The fear of Yahuwah hates unrighteousness and insolence and pride and the ways of wicked men, and I hate the perverse ways of bad men. Counsel and safety are mine, prudence is mine, and strength is mine. By me kings reign, and princes decree justice or right ruling. By me nobles become great, and monarchs by me rule over the earth. It is by the word, and specifically by the covenants that were birthed in the earth that gave rulership to a particular family, to a particular tribe, and to a particular family of that tribe. Right? <clears throat> Just for anyone that doesn't know... Kings and rulers would come from Abraham, then Yitzhak, and through him from to Yaakob, and from Yaakob to Yahuda, the kingdom was given, where it was said that everywhere the soles of men's feet tread, you will have someone reigning. And you can find that true from that point and going forward. After a time when Dawid came to power, he was told that he would always have a son to reign over the seed or the children of Yisrael, which is something that we've been showing that's been happening through history from that time as well. Tetafi being taken at the fall of Yahuda from Babylon, she, her being taken by Yahu from Egypt or Mitzrayim to Ireland is one of those things. The Asarxids reigning over the Parthians and Scythians or the, um, the royal Scythians are another example of the seed of Dawid reigning over the people. The children of Esther, married to the Persian rulership, are the seed of Yahuda reigning over the people, reigning over where men's feet tread. It's another example of that kind of thing. And that is why all the monarchs and people are related. It's not some evil conspiracy from Satan. He kills, steals, and destroys but the things established from above cannot be broken. My point showing this is he gave the covenants to him, and those covenants being birthed is the truth given to men that rule over them. It is the word that established this as a fact of law. He goes on to say, I love those that love me, and they that seek me shall find Wealth and esteem belong to me, yea, abundant possessions and righteousness. Better to have my fruit than gold and precious stones, and better my pro sorry, and my produce is better than choice silver. 
I walk in ways of righteousness and conversant with the paths of judgment, that I may divide substance to them that love me and may fill their treasuries with good things. This part, see, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and to fill their treasuries is how it is written right there. You, you can see it, it kind of makes the same sense, but right here, but I divide substance to them that love me. That, that reads a little bit different, but I divide substance among the strong is what is mentioned in Psalm 23 or 22. After he was suffering, my L, my L, why have you forsaken me? And that's a direct allusion to right here, which I found interesting. And fill their treasuries with good things. If I declare to you the things that daily happen, I will remember to recount the things of old. So if he's going to foretell to you, he's going to recount things that have already happened because he's given us the end from the beginning. If you followed along with the creation account parable, he literally showed us all of his works until the millennial reign. Yahuwah made me the beginning of his ways for his works. This is the Aleph Bet, the, 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 the Ruach or the spirit that was our Mashiach that came from the bosom of the Father through which all things were spoken and came into being. He spoke and it, and it existed by the power of the Ruach, as it's mentioned, right? It says, He established me before time, in the beginning, before He made the earth. Even before He made the depths, before the fountains of water came forth, before the mountains were settled, and before all hills, he begets me. Yahuwah made countries and uninhabited tracts, and the highest inhabited parts of the world. When he prepared the Shemaim, I was present with him, and when he prepared his throne upon the winds, when he strengthened the clouds above, and when he secured the fountains of the earth, and when he strengthened the foundations of the earth, I was by him suiting. Now, the word is suitable or making myself suitable, right? Providing himself in whatever fashion was needed to be fitting for the occasion. That's what he did as the word from the bosom of the Father who spoke the language that made things happen. Right? I was by him suitable. I was that wherein he took delight, or I was his daily delight, as it's mentioned. I rejoiced in his presence continually, for he rejoiced when he had completed the world, Aleph through Tau, and rejoiced among the children of men. Now then, son, hear me, the one speaking. Prosperous is the man who shall hearken to me, and the mortal who shall keep my ways, watching daily at my doors, waiting at the posts of my entrances. For my outgoings are the outgoings of life, and is prepared favor from Yahuwah. So he tells us what he tells everyone, watch. Watching what daily at his doors, waiting at the posts of his entrances right because his outgoings that means his his comings and goings the the revolutions of light in the world are the outgoings of life and is and in them is prepared favor from yahuwah if you remember what we've been talking about how renewed covenant believers in the apostolic constitutions are enjoined to fellowship morning and evening at the sun at the and it's part of the seven times in a day where we acknowledge and praise our maker. All of that ties together with this part. Okay. This is not exactly how it reads right here at all. You don't get that in any fashion. But in the Septuagint, it's pretty clear. But they that sin against me act wickedly against their own souls. And they that hate me love death 
and he is our life, something we don't want to be hating. Just one moment, please. All right, everyone, this section is from the Deuteronomy 32 from the Brenton Septuagint again on the left and the KJV on the right. We're, we're not going to go over the entire thing here, but <clears throat> it it would be actually it would be worthwhile to probably read this just so you can see it. A lot of people call this Moses' song, as you see here. But if you go to the previous chapter, you'll see that it was Yahuwah that gave Moshe the song to speak to them. So, where is it? Right here. Verse 31, verse 16, and it says, And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Behold, you shall sleep with your fathers, and this people will arise and go a-whoring after the strange mighty ones of the land, into which they are entering, and they will forsake me, and break my covenant. That covenant that he birthed on the 15th of the third month, which was where every covenant was made, was also the day that Yitzhak was born. And it's also the day that Yahuda was born through whom our Mashiach came. It's also the day that I believe Yahushua was, was born himself in the flesh. And it's also the day that his body was born again in the Ruach. It, the renewed covenant and the giving of it. So I tend to believe that that is the day of his birth above others. But my point in sharing this is when we break the covenant, that's why he died. To ratify that covenant it was breaking. It is what caused him to have to suffer for our, on our behalf. <clears throat> it says, And they broke my covenant, which I made with them. And I will be very angry with them in that day, and I will leave them and turn my face away from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and afflictions shall come upon them, and they shall say in that day, Because Yahuwah my Elohim is not with me, these evils have come upon me. Not, not any other name but Yahuwah is my point to show you here. And we know this is Yahushua speaking in just a moment. And I will surely turn away my face from them in that day because of all the their evil doings which they have done, because they turned aside after strange Elohim. And now write the words of this song. So Yahuwah is telling him that he's giving the song. <clears throat> now write the words of this song and teach it to the children of Israel, and you shall put it into their mouth that this song may be a witness for me among the children of Israel to their face. For I will bring them into the good land, which I swear to their fathers, to give to them. See, it was our Mashiach that made the covenants. The father cannot be divided, diminished, or made lesser in any capacity. He can't suffer. There is no... There's nothing anyone can do to him. He is all-powerful. He is beyond comprehension. So our Mashiach is finite. He is all of the completeness of Elohim bodily. The Father is not bodily anything. He's Ruach, right? He's spiritual. We perceive him in our mind in the Ruach. No flesh can see him and live. These things are what they try to explain to us. So the one that appeared to people was our Mashiach by the will of the Father because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But this is what he's trying to share here and this is what was this is why these things were removed in the Masoretic text. But he says, And now write the words of this song and teach it to the children of Israel and you shall put it in their into their mouth that this song may be a witness for me among the children of Israel to their face. For I will bring them into the good land in which I swear to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, and they shall eat and be filled and satisfy. Then they will turn aside after Elohim Ahrim or other mighty ones and serve them, and they will provoke me and break my covenant. And this song shall stand up to witness against them, for they shall not forget it out of their mouth or out of the mouth of their seed. 
for I know their wickedness, what they are going here, what they are doing here this day, before I have brought them into the good land, which I swear to their fathers. <clears throat> Meaning, from the time that he had brought them out until this time, he he knows what they've been like, and he foretold what they were going to do even then. And Moshe, <clears throat> excuse me wrote this song in that day and taught it to the children of Israel. And then it goes on to talk about some other things. But I wanted to show you, this was Yahuwah's song that Moshe was given. Okay? And then this is what the song says. You all would be familiar with it from the Masoretic text more than likely. Some people may have read it from here as well. I've read it before. I don't remember these things it, like I just recently have seen them. So that's why I thought to share. Attend to Shemaim and I will speak and let the earth hear my the words out of my mouth. Let my speech be looked for as the rain and my words come down as dew as the shower upon the herbage and as snow upon the grass. For I have called on the name of Yahuwah, assign you greatness to our Elohim. His works, true, or perfect in the other one, and all his ways, judgment. Elohim, trustworthy, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Righteous and kadosh is Yahuwah. They have sinned, not pleasing him, spotted children, a forward and perverse generation. Do you thus recompense Yahuwah, people thus foolish and unwise? Did not he himself, your father, purchase you, and make you, and form you? Remember the days of old, consider the years for past ages. Ask your father, and he shall relate to you your elders, and they shall tell you. When the Most High divided the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the nations according to the number of the messengers of Elohim. And that's one of the differences there. These are the messengers of Elohim, and this one says the children of Israel. Right? And there's whole doctrines based off of how they deserve to rule over everyone and all these different things because of that now the messengers of elohim is what was intended and you can see that in the recognitions of clement where kepha mentions at the fall at the tower of babel it was given over for his messengers to rule over the different tribes The illusion here that I do want to point out is that you see a parable of the children like a microcosm of the world. And while they go into Egypt is 70 or 72, 75, if you will, there's a general parallel with the, the families of Yaakov and the nations of the world, both going into Egypt or confusion, if you will, right? So there was a type and picture there, but it was not literal. This was literally the messengers. And his people, Yaakov, became the portion of Yahuwah. Yisrael was the line of his inheritance. He maintained him in the wilderness, in the burning, in burning thirst and a dry land. He led him about and instructed him and kept him as the apple of an eye. The Hebrew here is literally the little man of the eye. They translate that as the apple of the eye because that's an, an English colloquialism, meaning what has your affection. But when you look at someone, you literally have a little man in your eye that's perceived. And that's the one in, he kept him as his Mashiach, as he, when he looks at him, that's what he was seeing, like he was gazing upon his Mashiach.
right? And that's what he wants to see when he's looking upon his bride, the little man of his eye. As an eagle would watch over his brood and yearns over his young, receives them having spread his wings and takes them up on his back, Yahuwah alone led them. There was no strange mighty one with them. He brought them up on the strength of the land. He fed them with the fruits of the fields. They sucked honey out of the rock and oil out of the solid rock. Butter of cows and milk of sheep with the fat of lambs and rams, of calves and kids with fat of kidneys of wheat. And he drank wine, the blood of the grape. So Jacob ate and was filled and the beloved one kicked. He grew fat, he became thick and broad. Then he forsook the El that made him, and departed from Elohim his deliverer. They provoked me to anger with strange Elohim. With their abominations they bitterly angered me. They sacrificed to devils and not to Elohim, to mighty ones whom they knew not. New and fresh came in, whom their fathers knew not. You have forsaken El that begot you, and forgotten Elohim who feeds you. And Yahuwah saw, and was jealous, and was provoked by the anger of his sons and daughters, and said, I will turn away my face from them, and I will show what shall happen to them in the last days. For it is a perverse generation, sons in whom is no belief, no faith, no trustworthiness. They have provoked me to jealousy with not Elohim. They have exasperated me with their idols, and I will provoke them to jealousy with them that are no nation. I will anger them with a nation void of comprehension. For a fire has been kindled out of my wrath. It shall burn to hell below. It shall devour the land and the fruits of it. It shall set on fire the foundations of the, of the mountains. Just so you know, hell, the original of hell as a whole, just like Sheol is a grave, it's what you'd put someone's body in. That's what that originally meant. It was the ground or the grave. All right. I will gather evils upon them and will fight with my weapons against them, consumed with hunger and the devouring of birds, and there shall be irredeemable destruction. If you remember, when the, the men first started going apostate with idolatry after the instigation of the likes of Mitzrayim, Cush, Nimrod, the using magic to delude people, and they instituted idolatry and whatnot, it caused the birds, the ravens, to eat the seed that men were trying to sow in the ground. He was bringing on destruction and famine. It was allowed, if you will, demons and Satan was allowed jurisdiction over these things because men were yielding themselves to him instead of the truth. Right? I will send forth against them the teeth of wild beasts with the rage of creeping on the ground. All right, this is serpents in italics, but with the creeping things on the ground. Without the sword shall bereave them of children and terror out of the secret chambers. The young man shall, this reminds you of the Inquisition. All right. The young man shall perish with the virgin the suckling with him who has grown old. I said, I will scatter them, and I will cause their memorial to cease from among men. Were it not for the wrath of the enemy, lest they should live long, lest their enemies should combine against them, lest they should say, Our own high arm, and not Yahuwah has done all these things. It is a nation that has lost counsel, neither is their comprehension in them. They had not sense to comprehend, 
Let them reserve these things against the time to come. How should one pursue a thousand, or two rout ten thousand or tens of thousands, if Elohim had not sold them, and Yahuwah delivered them up? Notice Elohim had sold them, and Yahuwah delivered them up. The Father is the only true Elohim, and he who causes it to exist is the one who came in his Father's name. All right. <clears throat> For their mighty ones are not as our Elohim, but our enemies, void of comprehension. For their vine of the vine of Sodom, and their vine branch of Gomorrah, their grape a grape of gall, their cluster one of bitterness, or Mara, wormwood, if you will. Their wine the rage of serpents, and the incurable rage of asps. Behold, are not these things stored up by me? And these are all explained. The serpents are the kings of Greece, the Hellenization that was brought in, all right? The poison of that was talked about in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The bitterness and wormwood and the gall is what was brought in by Simon the Magician, the first and the beginning of the Gnosticism that was going to be coming typified by the, he was called, uh, I don't want to misquote that, I'm sorry, but it was in him that it was seen the gall of bitterness and the uh, the wormwood there by Kepha in the book of Acts, if you remember. You can go into what happened in detail by reading the recognitions of Clement and then parts of the apostolic constitutions in regard to what happened with Simon the Magician and Shimon Kepha. But even that doesn't have all of the information of what had transpired. Either way, it says, Behold, are these not are not these things stored up by me and sealed among my treasures? In the day of vengeance I will recompense, whensoever their foot shall be tripped up. For the day of their destruction near to them, and the judgments at hand are close upon you. For Yahuwah shall judge his people, and shall be comforted over his servants. For he saw that they were utterly weakened, and failed in the hostile invasion, and were become feeble. Well, that seems like America today, isn't it? And Yahuwah said, Where are the mighty ones on whom they trusted, the fat of whose sacrifices you ate, and you drank the wine of their drink offerings? Let them arise and help you, and be your protectors. Behold, behold that I am. And there is no mighty one apart from me. I kill, and I will make to live. I will smite, and I will heal. And there is none who shall deliver out of my hands. For if I will, sorry, for I will lift up my hand to Shamayim, and swear by my right hand, and will say, I live forever. For I will sharpen my sword like lightning, and my hand shall take hold of judgment, and I will render judgment to my enemies and will recompense them that hate me. I will make my weapons drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, with the blood of the wounded, and from the captivity of the heads enemies that rule over them now the other version says the long-haired enemy chiefs right it, it mentions there it doesn't read that way on this one i remember mentioning long-haired enemy chiefs before and it didn't seem it didn't seem to make sense to me this one does a lot more, but the other one, if you remember, Apollyon has long hair, and that whole thing kind of alluded to that. But this one doesn't mention that at all. It says, but it says, from the captivity of the heads of the enemies that rule over them, right? And then 
that mentions in Gad the seer that the captives will become the captors and they will rule over the the weak will rule over the strong in truth and in righteousness right rejoice you shamayim with him and let all the messengers of elohim worship him that's a direct quote from the book of hebrews and that one is removed also showing you who's being spoken of right here Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. He came to his own, and his own did not right, accept him. And let all the sons of Elohim strengthen themselves in him, for he will avenge the blood of his sons and will render vengeance and recompense righteousness to his enemies and will reward them that hate him, and Yahuwah shall purge the land of his people." And it says, Moshe wrote this song in that day and taught it to the children of Israel. And Moshe went in and spoke all the words of this law in the ears of the people. He and Yahushua, the son of Nun. And Moshe finished speaking to all Israel, and he said to them, Take heed with your heart to all these words, which I testify to you this day, which you shall command your sons to observe and do all the words of this law, which law he recited to them before, like, he, like it's mentioning. The book of Deuteronomy was a recap of everything that happened, including the reciting of the laws that he did right before them, right? The Hallelujah Scriptures mentions long-haired there, you know, the long-haired enemy chiefs. <laughs> Thank you, brother but it says take heed with all your or with your heart to all these words which i testify or witness to you this day which you shall command your sons to observe and do all the words of this law for this is no vain word to you for it is your life he is our life the covenant the Torah was our life. The covenant, the keeping of it, was life to the people. Eternal life. That was the whole point. And because of this word, you shall live long upon the land into which you go over the Yarden to inherit it. Another witness for this is you can look up the hedge of protection that is mentioned by Satan when in the book of Job, where he goes, haven't you put a hedge of protection around you? That hedge of protection is the covenant protection that he puts around those that are obedient to him, where they cannot be messed with. So I encourage anyone to look into that. All right, and then we're done with this section for now. So if you give me just one moment, we will um, we will go over to the book of Job, Elin. All right, now this is to go along with what a brother last week was asking about on what we should do on the Sabbath. We have a few videos, or sorry, at least two. I don't know if there's more, but there's at least two videos that we've put on the scripture studies where we've gone over the apostolic constitutions on what to do or what to think on on Shabbat. And it was from, I believe, book seven, there's a few chapters there. It's rather long, and we'll go ahead and put that in the description, and we'll share that along with this video for a full idea of what we know about what to do on Shabbat. There's all, obviously, there's other nuances. The direct commands in the scriptures, which we're not going to cover. The illusions of what it says to do in Yeshayahu about those that keep the Sabbath the mention of the eunuchs that keep his Sabbath and things of that nature. We're not going to really dig into any of that. It's about what we as believers should be doing on this day, right? And while I don't have every nuance, the, the best thing to look at is that Apostle of Constitutions really goes into great detail, amazing stuff. Right here, you can get a little bit of a taste of it just in plain writing. And the best source I have that I'm familiar with outside of what we call the Bible is right here in the book of Yobelim. 
So we don't need to read all of that because we've covered this before and we're going to be reading it again pretty soon. But this was given, remember, on the 16th day of the fifth month, or the third month, sorry, the day after they made the covenant. And then he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights with Yahushua being given the book of Yobelim right here and writing down the, the book of the covenant that he wrote, Moshe wrote himself, right? But right here, we'll start on, um, we'll start right here. And Moshe was on the mount 40 days and 40 nights. And Yahuwah taught him the earlier and the latter history of the division of all the days of the Torah and of the testimony. I don't know if any of you are not familiar, but it's pretty well known since Ron Wyatt's time. And there's been more men that have also made videos, the patterns of evidence we've talked about. There's more documentaries from other people that have recently come out that cover the Exodus path. The, the Red Sea crossing, where Mount Sinai really is, the altar that was built, the golden calf altar, the corral they used, the rock that was split in Horeb, the, the palm trees and, and the um, fountains and palm trees that were there. All of those locations are known. They've now gone to them, they've been explored and talked about. So I highly encourage everyone look into what Ron Wyatt originally shared on them. It has the best evidence. Since time has gone, it's harder and harder to find the same things that he found. But either way, it says, when Moshe was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights, and Yahuwah taught him the earlier and the latter history of the divisions of all the days of the Torah and of the testimony. And he said, incline your heart to every word which I shall speak to you on this mount and write them in a book, in order that their generations may see how I have not forsaken them for all the evil which they have wrought in transgressing the covenant which I established between me and you for their generations this day on Mount Sinai. Sinai also means erudite scholar. If you look into the, the meaning of it from the Red Dictionary, Eric Bissell talks about that. And thus it will come to pass when all these things come upon them that they will recognize that I am more righteous than they in all their judgments and in all their actions. And they will recognize that I have been truly with them or I have been true with them where he will be trustworthy even when we're not. He is doing the things that he said even when we won't. And do you write for yourself all these words which I declare unto you this day? For I know their rebellion and their stiff neck before I bring them into the land of which I swore to their fathers, to Abraham and to Yitzhak and to Jacob, saying, Unto your seed will I give a land flowing with milk and honey. And they will eat and be satisfied, and they will turn to Elohim Achrim, or strange Elohim, other mighty ones, to which cannot deliver them from aught of their tribulation. And this witness shall be heard for a witness against them, for they will forget all my commandments, all that I command them, and they will walk after the Gentiles, and after their uncleanness, and after their shame, and will serve their mighty ones, and these will prove unto them an offense and a tribulation and an affliction and a snare. And many will perish and they will be taken captive and they will fall into the hands of the enemy because they have forsaken my ordinances and my commandments and the festivals of my covenant and my Sabbaths, which is 52 in the year on the weekly Shabbat but you also have the ones throughout with his Moedim, that he has Sabbaths that we are not supposed to forsake either. And my Kodesh place, which I have hollowed for myself in their midst, and my tabernacle and my sanctuary, which I have hollowed for myself in the midst of the land, that I should set my name upon it, 
and that it should dwell. And they will make to themselves high places, Bama, right? Those are talked about in um, even afterwards when Buddhism became a thing. If you look at the the lost tribes or the Saxons of the East and the West, where it goes into the inscriptions that were found in India with the characters of Sanskrit, but the Hebrew language. You have to trans translate or do a word for word, sorry, a letter for letter translation, change the font and you can read it in Hebrew. When the gentleman did that, it exposed the, the makings of Buddhism and how it was spread out from there. They had set up high places for themselves even then. And he goes into some detail about that. It was the Bamas. But either way, it says, then I will make, they will make to themselves high places and groves like the Druids and graven images like, like they did in Eastern Orthodox and Catholicism. Okay. And they will worship each his own. So as to go astray and they will sacrifice their children to demons and to all the works of the error of their hearts. And I will send witnesses unto them that I may witness against them, but they will not hear and will slay the witnesses also, and they will persecute those that, who seek the Torah, and they will abrogate and change everything so as to work evil before my eyes. And I will hide my face from them and will deliver them into the hand of the Gentiles for captivity and for a prey and for devouring, and I will remove them from the midst of the land. Which is what he mentioned in that song, Deuteronomy 32. And what he mentioned because of what they were doing in the wilderness and grumbling in the desert, that he was going to scatter them for these things. Okay? He says, And I will scatter them amongst the Gentiles, and they will forget all my Torah and all my commandments and all my judgments and will go astray as to new months and Shabbats and festivals and Yobelim and ordinances. So the four remembrance days we actually, we had gone astray on. In every conceivable way, we've profaned the Sabbaths. It's still not done properly by many that profess to keep it if you started in the evening regularly, right? And these things are all mentioned in different parts of scripture. I'm not trying to pick on anyone or anything. I'm just pointing out literally foretold, actually fulfilled. We've profaned his festivals with keeping pagan ones instead. Right? Started with the golden calves in the wilderness. Tomorrow's a festival to Yahuwah, right? Continued on with the Christ Mass with Sixtus the Third, and continues on even to this day with these things that are being done. We've lost track of the time with the Yobelim, the years of release, especially in our country in America. I don't know if we've ever had them established properly, which is why we had the curses in our produce and the things that we were, we were a Baraka before and we we're having abundance and now it's being depleted because we were not keeping his ordinances in regard to the things he said to do. And there's consequences for wrong choices. And after this, they will turn to me from amongst the Gentiles with all their heart and with all their soul and with all their strength. And I will gather them from amongst all the Gentiles, and they will seek me, so that I shall be found of them. They will seek and find, just like he said, when they seek me with all their heart and with all their soul. When you've got nothing left to lose and you cry out from the bottoms and the depths of your soul for help. I, I've, I've lived through that. I think a lot of you know that the very same thing I'm talking about. He mentions it here. This is the condition on which he will return to you. And I will disclose to them abounding shalom with righteousness. And I will remove them the plant of uprightness with all my heart and with all my soul. And they shall be for a baraka and not for a curse, and they shall be the head and not the tail. And I will build my sanctuary in their midst, and I will dwell with them, and will be Yahuwah their Elohim, and they shall be my people in truth and righteousness. 
and I will not forsake them nor fail them, for I am Yahuwah, their Elohim. <clears throat> I didn't mean to go into that part in particular, I'm sorry, but it does go exactly in line. Another witness with what we just read with Deuteronomy 32 and with who's speaking. The Father's been doing things through His Son from the beginning. All right. This is what he said, and then you can actually see that it is the truth. We've gone over it before, but for anyone that wants to see, after he came, it was plainly said that these things were true. It's explained that the two y'all who was mentioned in the story of Sodom and Gomorrah was the father, the Yahuwah of the Shemaim, giving power and authority to the Yahuwah on earth that Abraham spoke to, washed the feet of, and conversed and dined with as a type and foreshadow of the things that he would do when he came in the flesh. And that's found in Irenaeus's Against Heresies. But it says, And I will not forsake them, nor fail them, for I am Yahweh their Elohim. There we go. But real quick, let me find the section that we want to cover. In particular, we're looking at We're looking at the keeping of the Sabbath right here. The first part, it talks about how Yahuwah will appear to the eyes of all, and they shall all know that I am the, the Elohim of Yisrael and the father of all the children of Yaakov and king on Mount Zion for all eternity. It's the city of the great king, right? And Zion and Yerushalayim shall be, shall be set apart. And this right here, and the messenger of the presence who went before the camp of Israel took the tables of the divisions of the years from the time of the creation of the Torah and of the testimony of the weeks of the Yobelim according to the individual years, according to all the number of the Yobelim, right from the day of the new creation when the Shamaim and the earth shall be renewed and all their creation according to the powers of the Shamaim and according to the creation of the earth until the sanctuary of Yahuwah shall be made in Yerushalayim on Mount Zion, and all the luminaries be renewed for healing and for shalom and for Baraka for all the elect of Yisrael, and thus, or that they thus may be from that day unto all the days of the earth. Now, the one who goes before them, the, the type of our Mashiach there is Mikael. Mikael specifically is over the righteous remnant that are not in sin. And our Yahushua is over all of creation, of course, like our as given by the Father. But his special people is Yisrael. He went for the lost sheep while the one over his perfect remnant was Mikael, right? But he is the messenger of the presidents that was the one that was speaking to Moshe who mentions throughout the text there, as we'll get to it when we read the book here, that he, first person, and I was the one, that he, he spoke to him through me, you'll see all throughout this book. But that's for a different time. Um, and then it goes into the creation week, which we have covered, and this is the first reference for the keeping of the Sabbath. So we're going to go ahead and look at two sections real quick right here, and then we're going to go ahead and skip to the chapter 50, right? Or sorry, I think there's just one reference. But we get to the end of the creation, starting at verse 16 here. It says, And he finished all his work on the sixth day, all that is in the Shemaim and on the earth, and in the seas and in the abysses, and in the light, and in the darkness, and in everything. And he gave us a great sign, Yom HaShabbat, or the Sabbath day, that we should work six days, but keep Shabbat on the seventh day from all work. And the messengers of the presence and the messengers of sanctification, these two great classes he has bidden us to keep the Shabbat with him in Shamayim and on earth. And he said to us, Behold, I will separate unto myself a people from among all the peoples, and these shall keep the Sabbath day. 
it was not meant for everybody. He said it was made for man, but it was specifically given to Yisrael. And remember, it's not a racist thing because everyone that chose to sojourn amongst them became amongst the number of the tribe to which they sojourned. That was the way it was always meant to be. But it says, And these shall keep the Sabbath day, and I will set apart them unto myself as my people, and will barak them as I have set apart the Sabbath day, and do set it apart unto myself. Even so will I barak them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their Elohim. And I have chosen the seed of Jacob from amongst all that I have seen. I have written him down as my firstborn son. And have set him apart unto myself forever and ever. And I will teach them the Sabbath day, that they may keep Shabbat thereon from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should keep Shabbat with us on the seventh day, to eat and to drink, and to barak him who has created all things, as he has barak and set apart unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples. And that word for peculiar there is segula in the Hebrew. That, that is his peculiar people or is his precious, a peculiar treasure, if you will. It's a very wonderful word. We, we have to look at it together sometime. This is, it's above all the peoples and that they should keep Shabbat together with us. And he caused his commands to ascend as a sweet savor, acceptable before him all the days. Where uh, Shemuel mentions that obedience is better than sacrifice, right? It's better than the fat of lambs. It mentions in some of the Psalms, especially the Psalms, there's one or two in particular from the Dead Sea Scrolls as well that mention that our righteousness, or it's also mentioned in the book of Sirach, our acts of kindness, our obedience, and our doing of the truth are like these pleasant offerings that are a sweet savor to him. But right here, verse 23, it says, there were two and twenty heads of mankind from Adam to Yaakob, and two and twenty kinds of work were made until the seventh day. This is Baruch and Kadosh, and the former also is Baruch and Kadosh, and this one serves with that one for Kodeshah and Baraka. And to this it was granted that they should always be the Baruch and Kadosh ones of the first testimony and Torah. Now, it says in brackets right here, Yaakov and his seed, but that's not, that's not in the original text. And if you go back right here, it says 22 heads of mankind from Adam to Yaakov. All 22 of them are being spoken of here. And it says, <clears throat> it was granted that they should always be the Baruch and Kadosh ones of the first testimony in Torah even as he had set apart and Baruch the Shabbat day on the seventh day. Okay, so it could imply Yaakov and his seed because they're the ones that were given the Sabbath. I can see that one. But that right there is added. It says, He created Shamayim and earth and everything that he created in six days. And Yahuwah made the seventh day Kadosh for all his works. Therefore he commanded on its behalf that whoever does any work thereon shall die, and that he who defiles it shall surely die. That usually is mut wamut, or die the death, literally is how they translate that in some places in the KJV, right? But they say surely die, or they put an emphasis on it in most translations, right? Wherefore do you command the children of Israel to observe this day that they may keep it set apart and not do thereon any work and not to defile it as it is more set apart than all other days because it represents the millennial reign. 
and whoever profanes it shall surely die, and whoever does thereon any work shall surely die eternally. That's the mut wa mut, die the death, is what that means. Okay, die eternally. Your, your resurrection is going to be a beneficial one. That the children of Israel may observe this day throughout their generations and not be rooted out of the land, for it is a Kodesh day and a Baruch day. And everyone who observes it and keeps Shabbat thereon from all his work will be Kadosh and Baruch throughout all days like unto us. Declare and say to the children of Israel the Torah of this day, both that they should keep Shabbat thereon, and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts, that it is not lawful to do any work thereon which is unseemly, to do thereon their own pleasure, and that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk, and that it is or and to draw water, meaning like drawing water from a well where you have to carry the thing. It's a lot of work. These are stuff that you should pre-do. It doesn't mean that you can't pour water into a cup to drink it from your sink if you have clean water, right? The the, the Shabbat's not supposed to be a burden. It, it's about not doing our own pleasure. Now, you take that to mean what it means. That's a direct quote from Yeshiyahu. Some people will will misconstrue that one and say it's talking about a different thing, right? <clears throat> but right here we have another witness not to do our own pleasure. I take that to mean doing whatever I want to do, like go golfing or do anything that might be free, not cost anyone money, not work, but it isn't his business. Because here's the thing, the millennial reign, have you actually read what you're going to be doing there? There's things that are going on, things that are going to be happening that you're going to be busy, right? We're not doing our own pleasure, that's for sure, especially if you're made like a king or a Kohen. But it's just something to keep in mind. These things are a type and shadow what was to come, which is why the, these injunctions were given. But it says, in that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk, and to draw water, or to bring in or take out thereon through their gates any burden which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwellings. We've made picnic baskets before, and then we've taken them out. We've walked up a little hill in the forest to have our lunch and to read. That I, I, There's nothing wrong with that. It's directly given right here that that's a permissible thing to do if you prepared it the day before. So there's nothing wrong with that. Just like there's injunctions in scripture that if you're poor, you can go through the fields and eat the grain off of the fields of the people that have them. That is literally enjoined in his word as something that they're allowed to do. But if you recall, because it was the Sabbath day, there was men that had added rules saying that's not permissible, that's work. But nowhere in scripture do you see that injunction being prohibited on the seventh day of the week. That's added to and that's taking from. Those are the things that we're not supposed to do. We're not supposed to go beyond what is written. It says, And they should not bring in or take out from house to house on that day, for that day is more Kadosh and Baruch than any Yobel day of the Yobelim. On, on this we keep Shabbat in the Shamayim before it was made known to any flesh to keep Shabbat thereon, on the earth, and the creator of all things Baruch it, but he did not set apart all peoples and nations to keep Shabbat thereon, but Yisrael alone. Them alone he permitted to eat and drink and to keep Shabbat thereon on the earth. And that's why when our Mashiach came, he came like unto Moshe, and when Moshe came to free the children, it was the children of Yisrael, he freed from bondage. Yahushua also came to free them from bondage, but to sin and death. 
And while Moshe brought out the people from the land of Egypt with a mixed multitude, this was from the world the body was being brought up. And that was all the assemblies that were being built at that time. Just for context on how these things actually played out, right? And the creator of all things, Baruch, this day, which he had created for, that's why it's applicable for us to keep the Shabbat too. They all kept it until it was forced to, to do otherwise. And, the, <clears throat> excuse me. And the creator of all things, Baruch, this day, which he had created for Baraka and making it Kadosh and splendid above all days. This Torah and testimony or witness was given to the children of Israel as a Torah forever or unto ages unto their generations all right and then um the last reference here that we can cover is the it's in chapter 50 i believe this whole last chapter is about remembering yeah remembering the sabbaths okay <clears throat> we're going to read this book so i don't want to get into too much but this is after the end of it where he's recited all that they've happened for 2,410 years. And they are now standing on Mount Sinai with Moshe and he's about to send them back down, right? Another way that you can see that this very thing is what we ought to do as believers to get a full recap of history from the beginning to our times in chronological order is what Kepha gives to Clement at the beginning of the recognitions of Clement, where he recites the same thing. And this is another witness right here of that very thing for the children at that time. Because the true key to prophecy, as they say, is history. Real history opens up what foretellings actually happened and how it works. You can see cause and effect. But Yobelim chapter 50, remember the Sabbath. And after this Torah, I made known to you the days of the Sabbaths in the desert of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. And I told you of the Sabbaths of the land on Mount Sinai, meaning the Shemitahs as they call it, or the every seventh year, the year of release, right? And I told you of the Yobeli years in the Sabbaths of years, every 49 years. Then you have the 50th is the, the Yobel, which also counts as the first year of the next 49. That's what most people don't get. You see that most clearly when you look at um, right here, the Kohen order. This was originally written by Jerry Morris. The It was written out, but this is the order of the, you can see it's changing. This is 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 49 years, and then it goes, the next one would be the Jubilee, but it also counts right here, is the first year of the next counting, so it goes 49, and then this next year right here is the Jubilee, but it counts as the first year of the next counting, and that does that over and over again, it always works that way. So that's how the pattern actually functions in the, the, the scriptures for you. But back on point. <clears throat> it says, But the year thereof have I not told you, till you enter the land which you are to possess. And the land also shall keep its Sabbaths while they dwell upon it, and they shall know the Yobeli year. So it was the year of release that they actually went into the land, which is foretold right here. And then you can actually see that in the scriptures and in the Dead Sea Scrolls it mentioned specifically. But it doesn't give you the number. It was the 50th Yobel. And then roughly 30 Yobelim later, the 80th Yobel is when Yahushua came. That's what we premise. It mentions that in the footnote of one of the things of Josephus, but I have not found a second witness to confirm that yet. We're still looking. If anyone knows of any confirming witnesses that Yahushua came and announced the year of Yahuwah's favor in the 80th Yobelim from creation, 
I'd greatly appreciate it. If you have any information contrary to that, that it was a different Yell Bell that he had done that, I would greatly appreciate it because it's not so much proving a point as wanting the truth. Thank you. Just, just so everyone knows. But right here it says, And I told you of the Sabbaths of the land in Mount Sinai. Or right here. I already told that part. Verse 4 says, Wherefore I have ordained for you the year weeks and the years and the Yobelim. There are 49 Yobelim from the days of Adam until this day. 2,410 years from creation. And one week and two years. And there are yet 40 years to come, literally distant, for learning the commandments of Yahuwah until they pass over into the land of Canaan, crossing the Yarden to the west. So they had 40 years until 2450 Aniamundi, <clears throat> which was the year they went into the land. And then if you remember, it says in the 480th year since the sojourning of the children, that would have been 2,410. It would have been the fourth year of Shalomo's reign. And that would have been 2,888 years from creation. Or just at the end of the third day. But continuing here. Or sorry, just at the end of the, the second day. They're going into the third day. No, I was right, third day. You, you have the, the 2,000 to 3,000 would be in the third day. So, moving on. It says, Wherefore I have ordained the weak years, we read that part, until they go into the land of Canaan, crossing the yard into the west. And the Yobelim shall pass by until Yisrael is cleansed from all guilt of fornication and uncleanness and pollution and sin and error and dwells with confidence in all the land. And there shall be no more a Satan, meaning no more an accuser or adversary, or any evil one, and the land shall be clean from that time forevermore. And behold the commandment regarding the Sabbaths. I have written them down for you, and all the judgments of its laws. Six days it shall you labor, but on the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah your Elohim. In it you shall do no manner of work, you or your sons or your manservants or your maidservants and all your cattle and the sojourner also who is with you. And the man that does any work on it shall die. Whoever desecrates that day, whoever lies with his wife. And again, this is because it's the type of what it represents. Some people take exception to this and they say it's, this is nowhere in scripture. But Yahushua says that when we are of the resurrection, we'll, we will be made like the messengers who neither marry nor are given in marriage. So you won't be doing that kind of thing during the millennial reign or afterwards if you're his and you're made like the messengers. That's just the facts. You can partake of it as a type and shadow beforehand because of your expectation of being there or not. That's your choice. And that's what all the world gets to choose to do. But it is right here, and that's what it represents. It says, or whoever says he will do something on it, that he will set out on a journey thereon in regard to any buying or selling. And whoever draws water thereon, which he had not prepared for himself on the sixth day, and whoever takes up any burden to carry it out of his tent or out of his house shall die. And you shall do no work whatever on the Sabbath day, save what you have prepared for yourselves on the sixth day, so as to eat and drink and rest and keep Shabbat from all work on that day. And to Barak Yahuwah your Elohim, if you really want to get into what works are, you look at what he did. Look at what it represents. These types of things we can consider work, right? Although we're not actually creating anything, you can see 
what was made and what it's supposed to be for the idea behind it. The way the common law is supposed to work is that you take the equity of the law and you apply it in situations that aren't expressly stated. So <clears throat> we have the, the rules in the Torah, the judgments or the, the, the right rulings for how to do for a thief in regards to oxen and sheep when they're caught with it, if they've been caught after selling it. What you don't have is for other things, generally, there, there's a principle of they repay double, right? So you have to use the equity of that, the information given, and you find what is the right basis for all these things. While you might not have oxen, but you might have a different type of cattle or grazing that is between sheep and, and those, you'd have to find the fitting or equitable use of that same principle. And that's what a common law jury of your peers is meant to do. I'm digressing a little bit. These are all things that are interrelated. We have to live that way and actually do these things to be prospered in the world according to his word, because that is doing the thing that he said. Is it who has given you a day of festival and a set apart day and a day of the Kodesh kingdom? For all Yisrael is this day among their days forever. The day of the Kodesh kingdom, right? The millennial reign. For great is the honor which Yahuwah has given to Yisrael that they should eat and drink and be satisfied on this festival day and rest thereon from all labor which belongs to the labor of the children of men, save burning frankincense and bringing oblations and sacrifices before Yahuwah for days and for Sabbaths. This work alone shall be done on the, the Sabbath day in the sanctuary of Yahuwah your Elohim. And this is what Yahushua said, the, the Kohanim profane the Sabbath and are blameless. Right? And you, you get after me because I say, I make someone well on this, this Sabbath, right? On Shabbat. This is what he's talking about. They profane it by working, but that work was given. And this is the whole point of what he's trying to teach you. It's not... It's not about the thing itself. It's being obedient to what he says to do. So when he told the children to be circumcised, that's when you ought to do it, according to what he said. At this point in time, where you have the foretellings from Ezra that were almost 400 years before he came, and then you have the direct references when he came, you have Shaul saying that the circumcision is not to be done anymore. If you were circumcised, and stay in it. If you weren't, then don't seek to be one. And it was foreshadowed and alluded to even before these times, all the way back in the times of Yahushua, the son of Nun. And when the children in the wilderness were not circumcised, but all the men of battle died. That was a type of the, the times when they would not be circumcised before his return. So you can see these things over and over again in different ways, but it's whether or not we are listening to him because a circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, but obedience, obedience to the truth is what is desired, right? The Dead Sea Scrolls makes it even more clear. It says that the intelligent will studiously go through and find out which laws are still applicable for their times and day. It doesn't mean that all of them are, but the ones that are intelligent will seek them out and then do them. So right here he says, And every man who does any work thereon or goes on a journey or tills farm, whether in his house or any other place, or whoever lights a fire or rides on any beast, or travels by ship on the sea, or whoever strikes or kills anything, or slaughters a beast or a bird, or whoever catches an animal or a bird or a fish, or whoever fasts or makes war on the Sabbaths, the man who does any of these things on the Shabbat shall die, so that the children of Yisrael shall observe the Sabbath according to the commandments regarding the Sabbaths of the land, as it is written in the tablets which he gave into my hands, that I should write out for you the laws of the seasons, and the seasons according to the divisions of their days. 
Herewith is completed the account of the divisions of the days. So you see the one speaking is the one that wrote this out and gave it to him. Just like Moshe was commanded to write out things, it's because our Mashiach only says what he hears and does what he sees. So as he was commanded to write it out, he commanded to have one written out. And as he's doing, so he has others do, to follow his example, like a hand in the glove again. But these are the rules that go into the most detail outside of what you can see in the apostolic constitutions and then what is in the common scriptures, what we call the Bible. If you think this is kind of harsh, you can just read the Exodus account. Right after he had given these rules and injunctions, you had a man on the Sabbath day going and gathering up sticks, and he was collected, brought before him, and they said, what are we going to do about that? And he had to be stoned to death for violating the law that was just given. Uh, excellent question. I'll get that in just a second. So, and then after they stoned him, he instituted the Zitziot, where you had a blue color, blue thread on the kanaf or the edge of your garment to remind you of his law and to have us not be following, excuse me, after the stubbornness of our own heart. And you can read that account in Numbers 15. So our brother said, now that's doing what was prepared beforehand. There is absolutely nothing wrong. At least I have no qualms about warming food up. And there's a difference between starting a fire and having to kindle and work something and get the wood going. If you do it, you do it before the sun is up. Right? That's the intent. You don't have start fires and labor and work at something during the day on the Sabbath day. But turning a knob to warm up the stove to reheat food that you previously made there's nothing wrong with that. The, the Yahoo deem have stuff going slow cooking. They do things all the time. If you feel qualms about something like that, you can get up before sunrise and prepare the things that you need to have it ready for yourself. That's exactly what we're told that the virtuous woman or the, um, the uh, Chayil Eshat, from Proverbs 31 does, right? Now, our brother had asked, what do we do? What do you do if you're doing a 14-day fast on the Shabbat? I, I can't speak for everyone here, but the only thing that I have in regard to that, you, you see that Daniel kept three weeks of fasting, Ezra fasted, Baruch fasted. They were directly, other than Daniel, the others were directly told what to do by the mouth of Yahuwah, and they were doing things for specific purposes. If you're told to do that, I would not gainsay it, period. doesn't matter what any man tells you. doesn't matter what any else, anything else says. We're liable to the word ourselves according to how we comprehend it. The man of Elohim and the false prophet from uh, First Kings goes over that story if you're familiar with it i'll find the reference for you guys later for that one but in regard to this in judith or yahudith she was a widow and she would mourn every day but the sabbath she would wear her widow's garments and be in a state of widowhood and mourning except for on sabbath days and feast days to where she would change dress up and and enjoy her day and celebrate the festivals and rejoice and do his will. So um, I don't see our situation much different from that in regards to how we should behave at least on regular things. It never mentions in the apostolic constitutions or anything about fasting on the Sabbath, but it directly says that we ought not to do that. And that's the command that came last that we're incumbent to follow. if that makes sense to you. Aside from this section, 
like I said, there's mentions of it in a few different places. There's rules in the Dead Sea Scrolls, but some of those don't actually mesh with what we were enjoined to do later on because they did have the added bonds that were removed at the coming of Yahushua. But thank you all for your time. You have a wonderful Shabbat, a Shabbat Tov, and we will see you next week.